The Sonoran Desert in the autumn is quite uneventful. The dry, super hot summers disappear, and the beautiful 70 degree weather comes in. This is the time of the year that the people who live in the Sonoran Desert look forward to. It's the season where you don't have to worry about it being too hot to do anything. Through my travels over the past couple weeks through the parks, I have noticed one plant in particular that is in the middle of fruiting. This is a plant that I'm very excited to talk about, so let's go ahead and let's go find out who it is. Well, howdy everybody! Greetings and welcome to Powerful Plant Allies. I'm back! I'm back. I couldn't stay away too long. I finally get a break in my school semester and I'm out here. I said, you know what? I gotta come out here and shoot some more footage for the Sonoran Desert series for Powerful Plant Allies. And that is exactly what we're going to do and what we're gonna talk about today. Well, I found this beautiful wall right here of these gorgeous saguaros. I couldn't have asked for a better background. It's a beautiful day right now. It's about 70 degrees out here, uh, minimal wind. The sun is not too hot. It's just absolutely perfect. Again, I couldn't have asked for a better day for filming. I'm just so grateful. So you might be asking, what are we talking about today? Well, this is a very special video because we are in fact going to talk about our very first cactus here on Powerful Plant Allies, the Fishhook Barrel Cactus. Now the fishhook barrel cactus is iconic in the Sonoran Desert, along with the beautiful saguaro, like I'm standing in front of this beautiful patch right here. Iconic. You can't miss them. Every time you come out into the desert, they just have such a distinct look to them that you're like, that's a barrel cactus. And I'll tell you why, it's called a barrel cactus. Now barrel cactus get their infamous name, not only by their shape and appearance, but by their susceptibility to falling over during strong winds and even when a strong monsoon rolls over. So every time we get a strong monsoon here or some strong winds, you'll come out hiking the next day and you'll see barrel cacti toppled over all over the place. Luckily, that is not a death sentence for the barrel cacti. Like other cacti, they can grow under extreme conditions. The cacti will reroot themselves and will grow upward while still tipping on their side. It's actually quite fascinating. Fishhook barrel cacti can be two feet in diameter, and in the right growing conditions, they can grow up to 10 feet tall. I have not personally seen one that's 10 feet tall, but I have seen pictures, and it's amazing. Like, I see these maybe like four or five feet tall ones on average. But to imagine a 10 foot barrel cactus, gosh, that's gotta be beautiful. Now by observing them, you can see why they're called a barrel cactus. For one, their body is barrel shaped. And if you look even closer, you can see why fish hook is in the name. Let's check this out. Now I'm gonna insert in some cutting shots, but take a look at those hooks. The entire body of the cactus is covered with these. Now, they may look like they're safe and thick, but if the end of one of these hooks gets into you, it can be a bit tough to pull out. At the tip of each of these hooks are even smaller hooks, similar to the choya cacti we have here. I was picking some fruit one time and I got one of these stuck in me, and it was quite difficult to pull it out because it got pretty deep in there. So you don't want to go and just manhandle this cactus and, and put your hands on it. With any cacti, please always be safe. I'm shocked that I even have to say that, but please do be safe. When you live out here in the Sonoran Desert, you unfortunately have to be prepared to get pricked every once in a while. I'll insert a shot of my partner, Zach, a couple weeks ago when we were shooting some B-roll for this episode. Uh, we brought our dog out here and uh, we were just hiking around and he dropped his phone and he went down to go grab it. And there was a little choya bud there and that's it, got right into his thumb and that is painful. So just be very careful, please. Now looking at the body, you can see the indentation of the ribs inside the cacti. The cacti ribs are what helps the cacti stand tall, like our beautiful saguaros, which I'm standing in front of right now. 
Once the plant has died, you will see, quote unquote, the skeletal remains of some of these super old cacti. Now you ask, how old can a barrel cacti live? Well, a barrel cacti can live up to 100 years. That means that some of these cacti have been alive since the 1940s. And I can guarantee you, you can certainly feel the wisdom from these cacti. Every time I come out into the desert, I am just left absolutely speechless. Such ancient, ancient energy, sacred, sacred earth medicine. Just coming out here, you'll get some healing. And now for the best part, we're going to talk about the flowers and the fruit. The flowers grow in a circular arrangement at the top of the cacti. The flowers range from a reddish color to a bright yellow color. It is popular forage for bees and other insects. Plus, they are absolutely stunning and they grow almost in like a crown formation. So it always looks like the barrel cacti have a beautiful crown on top of them. Now from the beautiful flowers comes a beautiful crown arrangement of delicious fruits. The fruits are yellow and I like to call them small pineapples, except they taste absolutely nothing like pineapples. And you can see the dried flower petals at the top of the fruit, which makes them quite easy to grab and pull off of the cactus. These fruit do not have glochids, so you can pick them with your bare hands. Now you might ask what a glochid is. Glochids are hair-like spines on cacti. They may look small and harmless, but they can cause major irritation. Because they're so small, they are hard to locate and pull out. And you definitely don't want any of these inside of your mouth as well. And we're going to talk more about that when we do the prickly pear video. So if you're picking prickly pear or choya fruit, please be wary and use gloves and use proper precautions. But luckily, the barrel cacti do not have glochids, so that makes it an easy forage. So now let's go locate one of these beautiful cacti, let's go collect some fruit, and let's go see what's inside of the fruit. Come on. All right, my friends, we found a beautiful spot to have a seat. And I've got a few of the barrel cacti fruits right here with me. Let's go ahead and let's cut one of these open and let's see what's inside. So I've got in my pocket my handy dandy Mount Lemon sponsored pocket knife. <laughs> we're going to take this, we're going to open it up. We're just going to take one of these guys. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This one right here. Okay. We're just going to cut it right in half. Obviously, if you're using a knife, be very careful. I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna insert some cut and shots. Look at that. All of those little black seeds. Now, you can eat the seeds, but in the cautions we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, uh, if you eat too many of these seeds, uh, it will cause diarrhea, so that's definitely not fun. But Amazing, take a look at that. Now, these fruits, the best way I could describe them, they're certainly not my favorite fruit here in the Sonoran Desert. Uh, that would probably have to go to the prickly pear. They taste like peppers, except a little bit more sour, just a little bit. And what I do with these is I usually throw them into a stew uh, an ital stew, which is a Jamaican style stew. If you want a recipe video, you just comment, let me know, because I'll do it. Um, I've even fried these up uh, and kind of like you would caramelized onions. Uh, you could put them on top of a burger. Use them any way that you use peppers, essentially. Salads are great. Uh, and my friend Sarah, Sarah, if you're watching, this is for you. Thank you for sending me this. She sent me a barrel cactus pineapple upside down cake, which I'm going to link the recipe in the description below. It's not my recipe, uh, so whoever recipe it is, you will get credit in the description below. Um, I have not made it yet, but it looks absolutely delicious and I love pineapple upside down cake. So let's go ahead and let's taste one of these. I promise this is not turning into an ASMR video. <laughs> but. Mm. If you like peppers, you'll definitely like this. Delicious, crunchy. The seeds are a little slimy, uh, so it's an interesting texture. You can see there's a lot of uh, mucilaginous stuff in here. You see it's all sticky. 
but delicious, super good stuff right here on the Sonoran Desert. No glow kids. You can rinse them, eat them right off the cactus. You don't even need to prepare it that much. So super cool stuff. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the nutritional benefits of the barrel cacti fruit. The seeds, when applied topically to the skin in the form of a poultice, have been used as an analgesic. There are not many noted medicinal uses of barrel cactus, however, they are traditionally used as food. The fruits of the barrel cactus are rich in vitamins A and C. You can put the fruits in soups, stews, salads, curries, and even fry them up. I have even heard of people adding them to traditional Sonoran-style salsas. Many people will even use the barrel cactus fruit for baked goods, such as pies, cakes, and cookies. Many years ago, Native American tribes of the Sonoran Desert relied on the barrel cactus fruit, as well as many other cactus fruits, for midsummer food. The black seeds can be dried and ground up and used as a flour. They can be added into breads and even into smoothies. The flowers have been traditionally foraged and boiled into a tea or added into soups and other dishes. A flower essence of the barrel cactus flower has been used to help people through emotional distress by helping people release the energy that they're holding on to. The essence has also been used for people who need to strengthen their own trust of their own wisdom. The barrel cactus is native to southern Arizona, southern California, and even parts of New Mexico and Texas, as well as parts of northern Mexico. Now there are a couple cautions that you need to be aware of. For those who are not used to eating these fruits, too many of them could cause an upset stomach or diarrhea. If you eat too many of these fruits, people have also reported that it induces a headache. If an allergic reaction occurs, do not consume any more of the fruit. Luckily, barrel cactus is considered a relatively safe plant to interact with. Always do your own research. Alrighty, my friends, so we did it. We finally talked about the barrel cactus, our first cactus here on Powerful Plant Allies. Gosh, I feel so honored to be out here talking about this beautiful cactus with you guys. Come on out here and visit. The Sonoran Desert is magical, and I'll say that probably every video that I do here in the Sonoran Desert. You just gotta see it to believe it, and no matter what B-roll shot I get, I just, I can't seem to capture the beauty of it that you would experience if you were here. So as with any type of foraging, always be safe, practice identification. You want to make sure this is the barrel cactus, even though she's quite, you know, you see her, you know it's her. Um, just be careful, always be careful. I, my partner Zach, us here at Powerful Plant Allies, we're not responsible for any problems that may arise from the use or misuse of wild plants. That responsibility is on you. You know your bodies, as with any herb, plant, fruit, food. Know the cautions as well as the benefits. I'd say the cautions are even more important than the benefits because you definitely don't want adverse effects from merging with any type of medicine, food, or, or herb, or, or even pharmaceutical. So just do your own research. That's your responsibility. You can follow us on Instagram at Powerful Plant Allies. My personal Instagram is at Jack t.stannis. i link them both in the bio below. I had a new album that just came out, my first full-length album titled For the Lighter Road. I added that into the description below. It could take you to whatever streaming service that you'd like. Give it a listen. I'd love to hear what you think about it. I'll play a little outro music, uh, one of the album songs in the end of this video. And always, always consult a licensed professional before merging with any type of plant medicine, okay? It may be great to open up a foraging book 
and to know this stuff inside and out, but always talk to a professional, talk to a local herbalist that knows these plants inside and out. Just be safe. Be safe, be safe, be safe. I love you, I care about you. I do these videos for the purpose of education only, okay? And just take from it what you will. Share this video with whoever you think would be interested in this kind of stuff. It is such a rewarding path. When you come out here, you communicate with nature, you communicate with yourself, and it's just absolutely magical. So, super cool stuff. Give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, hit the bell notification to be notified every time I upload, and Powerful Plant Allies is back, baby. We're going to be talking about creosote, aka chaparral, next time on the Sonoran Desert Series. Take care, God bless, live with your heart, share love with the world, and aho. I'll see you next time.